All right, I gotta cut down the base a little bit on these and I'm gonna try that with a handsaw if I can find my handsaw. And uh, I'll be right back. Time to play with some clay. Okay, I cut off a lot of extra wood off this uh, base here. I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the other guy. I got this uh, reciprocating saw a long time ago. I just never used it until now. Let's get my tools back towards the center. They kind of work their way towards the edge. take hardly anything to do that. Wow. There we go. All right, I've got both of their bases uh, sorted out. I don't have to have as big a base as I was going to have and it doesn't it's not confined to a triangle or not triangle but a rectangle shape so now I got a little more free to work with this uh, guy here and then I'll work out a uh, some kind of base uh, when I get ready to do the you know join the two together now I don't have a, a long piece of wood sticking out behind him anymore so that's that's going to be a very liberating thing as far as creating a fluid type base to go with my clay so now i've got to start working on this guy and i'll be right back now as you can see i took the hair off this guy and uh, there was a reason for that i didn't necessarily like the long hair and I love his face. It's an older face, so I'll keep that. But uh, the hair, I wanted to uh, rethink. Come on, go where I want you.
There we go. Slipped into place as if I planned it. One of the things that inspired me to sculpt were a collection of Japanese ceramics my mom had, my mom and dad had, in their house in Hawaii when I lived there. And uh, the wrinkles in the, uh, the old fisherman's neck in ceramic clay was just amazing. And I always was fascinated by that. I guess that's what inspired me to start sculpting, actually. The tales my grandmother told me of huge Indians coming up to their cabin up in the mountains, their one-room cabin, when she was a little girl, asking for food, and their family would always give it to them. She took... We went and visited the cabin she grew up in, up in the mountains, of the Uinta Mountains. And uh, she said she remembered watching the Ute Indians on their hunting parties walking through the tree line just off the uh, meadow that they lived in. I mean, that kind of story tends to inspire and uh, invigorate a young person's mind. It certainly did mine. We had a lot of good westerns back in the 50s, so a lot more than we have now. And... Uh, I miss my grandmother. I got a great photograph someplace of my grandpa and grandma in the buggy just after they got married. Beginning of the century. My grandfather can remember sitting on his great-grandfather's lap, or my great-grandfather's lap, his grandfather. And his grandfather came across the prairie in 1847. So, I had a lot to inspire me to become a Western artist. It is our history, and it is the only true art form, American art form. I mean, modern art is European-inspired. Western art is American, fully American. the only true American art form. I may get arguments about that, but the fact is Western art didn't start in Europe. Although Europeans love it. What got me started doing Native American stuff is back when I was a kid, we took a vacation 
in our 50 Chevy to New Mexico or someplace in the southern southwest part of the United States. Back then you hung a uh, canvas bag full of water off your uh, hood ornament because if you're boiled over in the middle of the desert and you didn't have a and there's a long distance between one tr gas station and another you had to have some water to uh, put in your radiator funny how I just remember that we went to a uh, Pueblo I it seems like it was cliff dwellings and there were a group of Native Americans dressed in their regalia there dancing and that was the first time I'd ever come in contact with the Native Americans and uh, it left quite an impression in my mind. I've always had a great respect for the first people. The ones that were here to meet our ancestors when they came. Ah. Went there, so I let it be there. Well, I like that. Repeat that on the other side. This doesn't want to go where I want it to. There we go. I don't think I'm going to put a war shirt on them. I think what I'm going to do is put a vest with brass tacks on it and a voluminous shirt sleeve 
and have a neckerchief around his neck and maybe even put a top hat on him. Or some other kind of hat. I don't know. I'm just thinking right now. All right, this is the last thing I'm going to do tonight. A little lighter fluid on this. I'll work on that neck a little bit more next time a little too rough all right that's gonna be it for tonight i'll see you guys next time you like and a subscribe and ring the little bell also don't forget i have instructional videos available now online the link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos later everybody good night